Hi everyone, I'm Whitney. Welcome back to another episode of The Sitch. I have got a super sweet episode in store for you today. We're talking about artificial sweeteners. I always say I have a major sweet tooth, but really, all people do. Humans are biologically designed to prefer the taste of sweetness. From an evolutionary perspective, sweet flavors signified safe, energy-dense food, while bitter flavors often signified poisonous plants that you'd want to avoid. This preference is ingrained in us right from the start. Breast milk is naturally sweet in order to encourage infants' intake and to soothe, which is one possible reason why people turn to food and sweets for comfort. In our modern culture, this natural desire for sweetness has been exploited by food companies trying to hook consumers by adding sugar to just about everything. While moderate amounts of natural sugar are perfectly fine, excess added sugar has been linked to a laundry list of medical conditions and obesity, which is what led to the creation of artificial sweeteners. Unlike the natural sugar found in food, artificial sweeteners are either low or calorie free, and therefore they were initially thought to be a healthier alternative to sugar. But a food's calorie content isn't a good measure of its helpfulness, and over the years we've discovered that just because these artificial sweeteners may be safe, doesn't mean they're without side effects. Let's take a look at the real science on these fake substitutes. Non-nutritive sweeteners can be created through chemical synthesis or derived from plants. The most common artificial sweetener is sucralose, which is 600 times sweeter than table sugar. No wonder people like it so much. While artificial sweeteners have been deemed safe by the FDA, new research suggests that they may actually exacerbate the same conditions they're meant to benefit. Research shows consuming artificial sugars increases the risk of obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type 2 diabetes. One study showed that people who consumed a diet soda daily had a 36% increased risk of metabolic syndrome and a 67% greater risk of type 2 diabetes compared to people who don't drink diet soda. There are a few reasons why this may be the case. First up, studies show that consuming low and no calorie foods and beverages doesn't decrease the total caloric intake of a person's diet and may even increase cravings. One study showed that the consumption of aspartame, the artificial sweetener in Diet Coke and Coke Zero, increased subjects' appetite compared to water or glucose, aka natural sugar. So basically, people make up for the reduced calories in their diet soda by consuming more calories elsewhere in their diet, effectively defeating the purpose of artificial sugar in the first place. Another potential reason for the link between artificial sugars and chronic disease stems from the gut. Our digestive system and the microbial communities that live there play a major role in our susceptibility to disease. Unfortunately, there is a lack of human research in this area, but the data we do have suggests that artificial sugar may disrupt the delicate balance of our gut microbiome. One study showed that people who consume artificial sweeteners, like aspartame, have a different microbial composition than people who don't. Multiple studies in rodents support this, showing that artificial sweeteners, including aspartame, saccharin, and sucralose, aka Splenda, change the composition of the gut microbiota and may result in glucose intolerance, a hallmark of metabolic syndrome. Now you may be wondering, but what about natural artificial sweeteners, like stevia, which is derived from a plant? Well, studies in humans have shown that stevia is generally safe and non-carcinogenic. One study showed that 1,000 milligrams per day of steviol glycosides did not affect blood pressure or alter glucose metabolism in both healthy adults and those with type 2 diabetes. However, in a scientific opinion written by the European Food Safety Authority, researchers noted that there is preliminary data to suggest that stevia may have immunostimulating and inflammation-modulating effects and could raise concern for individuals suffering from autoimmune diseases and inflammation of the digestive tract. Now this is extremely vague wording, and it certainly doesn't allow us to make evidence-based recommendations for people suffering from these conditions. But given what we do know about artificial sweeteners in general, and the fact that they don't actually afford the disease prevention benefits they proclaim, I say, why risk it? I used to drink a lot of Diet Pepsi back in the day, and then a lot of stevia sweetened products when I learned the harms of diet soda. And then I eventually just started consuming regular sugar. Too much of anything is a bad thing, sugar or otherwise. When consumed in moderation though, or in its natural state in fruits and other plants, sugar isn't a problem. And that's the sitch. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you use stevia or other artificial sweeteners? And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more evidence-based nutrition information and healthy plant-based recipes. I'm Whitney, thank you so much for watching.